Good morning, friends. Welcome back and happy Monday. Okay, are you guys ready? Because we're going to learn some brand new stuff. Ready? Hello, cha-cha-cha. Hello, cha-cha-cha. Hello, and how are you? Cha-cha-cha. I'm fine, cha-cha-cha. I'm fine, cha-cha-cha. And I hope that you are too. Cha-cha-cha. Okay, guys, I'm going to skip calendar just for today because we are going to be starting all new stuff, okay? We haven't started April yet. It's technically still March for the next, like, couple days. But um, I'm going to start on our April stuff already since it's the first week of April this week. Um, so we're going to learn some brand new stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is start out by learning a brand new letter. Okay. Does anyone know the name of this letter already? It's the letter E. Can we say E? Ready? E. Okay, and does anyone know what sound the letter E makes? E says, ah, ah. Can we say that together? Ready? Ah, ah. Like, can't really draw very well, but this is an egg. Ah, ah, egg. Can we say that together? Ah, ah, egg. So our time, can we say E? E says, ah, 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 egg. Eh, eh, egg. Very good, guys. Awesome. So I'm going to attach our usual link to our Starfall website so you guys can hear more words that start with the letter E and our two YouTube songs, the ABC Mouse and the Jack Hartman song about the letter E so you guys can hear some more words that start with E. And when you're done with that, you can try to make a list with mommy or daddy or who's ever home with you of more wor of words you know that start with E and count how many you get, just like we do in class. Very good, guys. Okay, so we're going to learn a new sight word. Let's go over last week's sight word because this week's sight word and last week's sight word have a lot to do with each other. Our sight word last week was G-O. Does anyone remember what G-O spells? It spells go. Can we say go? Good. Now we're going to do this whole opposite for this week's. And a lot of you know how to spell this already. Um, but it's okay. We're going to practice it. We did this a lot during our transportation unit. Who remembers what S T O P spells? What does S T O P spell? We even have that song, right? S T O P says what you can do. What is that? It's stop, right? Can we say stop? Ready? Stop. Like a stop sign, right? Or if I want to put this in a sentence, um, we could say, please stop talking when your friend is talking, right? That's one of our class rules. Raise your hand. So can we say stop? Good. Okay. So we are going to do a brand new word family this week um because we finished up our last two word families so our new word family just like our other two by itself it happens to be a word okay it's not always the case but for this week it is at least so at is going to be the at family now at is a word all by itself it was one of our older sight words does anyone remember what at spells it spells at can we say at ready at Okay, so just like the other weeks, I'm going to use the A-T sound with some letters to make brand new words. So, I'm going to start, ooh, you know what, the orange isn't so easy to say, with the letter C. We seem to start with C a lot. That's okay. It helps us make a lot of words. Who could tell me what sound the letter C makes? Right, C says ka, ka, and I'm going to add at to that. So, we have ka. What word do we hear there, friends? We have cat, right? Meow. Ka, ka, cat. So could we say cat, ready? Cat. 
Now I'm going to add another one to it. Now there's actually lots of words in this family, so just like the others, we're only going to do a couple at a time, just so we don't forget the ones we've learned already. Our next one we're going to do is, starts with the letter S. Who could tell me what the letter S says? All right, S, remember, it looks like a snake and it sounds like one too. It says S. Can we say that? S. Now we're going to add at to it. So we have S, at, S, at, S, at. What word do we hear? It's the word sat, right? Like I sat on the couch. Can we say sat? Ready? Sat. Now we're going to do one more word. We're going to add an H in front of it. And again, like I said, there's a lot more words in this family. We're only going to do a couple at a time just so we make sure we learn them all. Okay, so now I'm going to add an H to it. What sound does the letter H make? Who remembers what H says? H says, ha, ha. Remember, it's like we're blowing out a candle. Ready? Can we say, ha, ha. Ready? Ha, ha. So we have, ha. What word do we hear? It's hat, right? Like we wear a hat in dress up center. Can we say hat, ready? So let's repeat after me all of our at words that we've learned today. So we have at, at, cat, cat, sat, sat, hat, hat. Here you go, guys. So like I said, because it's a new month, we're gonna just gonna learn all new stuff. Well, it will be a new month on Wednesday. So we're going to learn a brand new shape today. Does anyone know the name of this shape already? We haven't really talked about this this much. But there's a re reason also I used an egg uh, for the letter E, okay, because it happens to be this shape. This shape is an oval. Could we say oval? Ready? Oval. Now, if you notice, what kind of type of sides does an oval have? Does it have curved sides or straight sides? Does it have curved or straight sides? It has curved sides, right? You notice an oval has all curved sides, like a circle, okay? So just like a circle, it has curved sides. But here's where it's different from a circle, okay? Circles are round, right? We go say they go around. Is this oval around? No, it's not, okay? If I were to make a basketball shaped like an oval and I tried to bounce it, it would just poof right over, okay? It doesn't make a very good ball. So it's not round, okay? So that's how you get the difference between a circle and an oval. They both have curved sides, right? But an oval is not round or a circle is round, okay? So our oval, we could say, has curved sides. Can we say curved sides, okay? But then in our brain, we know it's not a circle because it's not round. Awesome. And we're going to learn one new, one more new thing today, and I'm going to leave our numbers for tomorrow just because there's a lot to learn. So I also have a brand new color. Does anyone know the name of this color? It's the color yellow. Can we say yellow? Ready? Yellow. And I think yellow is perfect for this month because we're going to start to see lots of flowers coming out, and a lot of them might be yellow. So it's a good color for the month. Can we say yellow? Ready? Yellow. Very good, guys. Okay. So we're going to continue talking about water, which we've been talking about a lot. But today we're going to do something a little different with it. We're going to talk about how we use water. We've talking about this a little bit, but we're going to talk about it more. So I want you guys to think for a second, how did you use water this morning? When you woke up, what's something that you did? Did you do anything else? Well, I'll tell you so far how I've used water this morning. So I had a glass of water to drink with my breakfast, right? See, because water helps keep us healthy. Remember we said most of our bodies are made up of water. We talked about this a little bit last week. Um, so we need to drink water in order to stay healthy. But that's not the only way water keeps us healthy. This morning, I also washed my hands a few times, right? We need to make sure those germs go away. And I also brushed my teeth, okay? So water else also helps to keep us clean, okay? It helps us to stay healthy, right? We drink water, and we also use it to clean ourselves by washing our hands, brushing our teeth. We also can take a bath or shower, right? We can wash our clothes. So water helps keep us from being thirsty, and it also helps keep us clean. 
but there's lots of other things we can do with water and that's what we're going to talk about this week but i also want to talk about plants and animals using water so we drink water right but so do animals okay my guinea pigs on their cage have water bottles you really can't see it here but um they do they have water bottles and they have to be refilled every day because they drink water just like we do and other animals drink water too right I'm sure you guys, if you have a dog, you've seen your dog drink water, or just any water animal, even outside in like the wild, animals drink, like say a deer, will drink water from a lake, okay? So animals need water just like we do. They also keep clean with it too. Like if you guys ever have seen a bird bath, I know my mom has a bird bath, right? We can see the birds bathing themselves in the water, okay? Animals use water to keep clean just like we do. But there's one thing that animals do that we do not. Now, some animals live in water, right? We don't live in water, but can you guys think of an animal that lives in water? There's quite a few, right? We can certainly think of the easiest one would be fish, right? Fish live in water, okay? Um, lots of other animals live in water, like dolphins, okay? Whales, all these animals live in water. So for some animals, it's not just the drinking, they, it's not just they have to drink water, but water literally makes up their home, okay? So we definitely need water. And there's one more quick thing I'm going to talk about. We're going to talk about this a lot this week. Um, you guys tell me, because we've talked about this a lot already, especially a lot in our last unit when we did our science experiment. Why do plants need water? I actually brought our bamboo plants home from school that we have in the window, and I've been giving them water every few days. Well, and I'm sure you guys have seen me do that at school too. And I was watering our science experiment plants you know, before they got thrown in the garbage, as we remember. But um, why? Why why have I been watering them? Does anyone remember? Well, we know plants need water in order to grow, right? We said plants make their own food. We said they need sunlight, water, and air, okay, to make their own food and to grow. So obviously, if they don't have water, they can't grow, right? When we had grown our plants, the one thing I kept the same is I gave them both water, right? We didn't give one group the sunlight, but we gave both of them water, okay? So plants absolutely need water in order to grow. So one thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to have you guys um, email me um, a way that, you know, people, animal, or plants use water. It doesn't have to be one of the ones I gave you. It can be any way you can think of that we use water, okay? either people, animals, or plants. And you guys can email me back that tonight and tomorrow I will share a list of your ideas. So we're gonna read a book all about animals using water, okay? So this book is called Why Living Things Need Water. So as you could see on the front here, we have our two zebras. And our zebras are drinking water out of a lake, okay? Because just like people need water, animals need water too. So let's find out why. So what is water? Water is a liquid, right? Oh, we know that word, right? We talked about that a lot. Liquids are runny. Water has no smell, color, or taste. So like we said before, right, we can use water to help keep us clean. These kids are washing their hands, and this girl is drinking a bottle of water. Water falls from clouds as rain, right? Here's our cloud. We know rain is a type of precipitation. Rain fills up rivers, lakes, and oceans. Right, so we know our rain was our liquid precipitation from the clouds. Living things and water. People, other animals, and plants are living things. All living things need water. So as you see here, these geese they live right near the water, okay? The water's part of their home. And here's this cute doggy, he's drinking water. Animals drink water through their mouths. Plants take in water through their roots. Okay, so we know animals drink with their mouth, right? Um, like I said, we drink water through our mouth. My guinea pigs with their water bottle, they drink it through their mouth, okay? But plants don't have mouths. I'm sure you guys have noticed that, right? So plants have roots, okay? Those are the, it's the bottom of the plant. It looks like this. It kind of works like the plant's feet help keep it in place. But it also sucks the water up from the ground and lets it travel up the plant. 
Okay, so plants take in water using their roots. And actually all of next month, we are gonna be talking all about plants. Okay, so we'll learn a little bit more, but this is a pretty good introduction to why plants need water. Some living things live in water. What do you guys see in this picture here? Well, I see a dolphin, I see some coral on the bottom, and I see different types of fish. All of these need water. It's their home. Fish live in water. So why do living things need water? People and animals need water to stay alive, right? Like we said, our bodies are mostly made up of water and we need to drink water to be healthy. Plants need water to stay alive too. Hmm, this plant looks pretty sick. He's probably not getting enough water, right? Because it needs to drink water through its roots, just like we need to drink water. People need water to keep their bodies working. Other animals need water too to keep their bodies working as well. So here we have warthogs like um, Pumba, right? And they're drinking from a lake. And these people are drinking bottled water, right? People don't really drink out of lakes generally, so. Plants need water, air, and sunlight to make food. Hey, we know that already, right? We learned that in our other science experiment. Plants need water to grow. So here the grass and this little plant are sucking up the water we're using their roots to help them to grow and to make food. Some living things use water to keep clean, right? Here's an elephant giving himself a bath with water. And elephants use their trunk like a hose and squirt the water on themselves. People use water to keep clean, right? Here's the boy washing his hands. Like we said, we use water to keep ourselves clean when we take a bath or a shower, right? We wash our hands, we brush our teeth, um, even clean our clothes, right? We put them in the washing machine to clean our dishes. We use the dishwasher, right? There's a lot of ways we use water to make sure we're clean. So water quiz. Which one of these things does not need water? Hmm, let's think. Books, fish, or a tiger? Friends, I think we know the answer to this. Which one of these do not need water? Yeah, the books, right? Are, are, are books alive? No. Does, does this book need to eat or drink? No, because it's not alive. So, no, books do not need water, but people, animal, and plants certainly do. The end. So, like I said, tonight I'm going to have you guys email me a way that you can think of that either people, animal, or plants use water. And again, it doesn't have to be just one that we talked about in this book. It could be any way you can think of because there's probably hundreds of ways that we use water. So, I wanted to play Blast Off with you guys and then we'll do a brand new game that you've never seen before. So, I need everyone to stand up. Ready? And we're going to slowly count down from 10 to 1 and then blast off. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off. Good. One more time. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off. Good job. Okay, let me just readjust the camera for our math game. Okay, tulips, one thing we're going to be doing this week is talking all about shapes again. We haven't talked about them in a while, but we're going to talk about shapes. What we're going to do this week is we're going to be working on some shape puzzles. These look pretty similar to the mystery pictures game we've played, right? You guys click on the shape, at the shapes, and it makes a picture. Well, here we're doing literally the opposite. They're going to give us the picture, and then we're going to tell us what shapes they need to make the picture. So it's kind of the opposite of the game. But you, if you guys can do mystery pictures, which I know you can, you'll be able to do this. Like I said, it's just the opposite. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the different pieces that are needed to make this puzzle. Okay, so I'm going to use the same shapes we have in the classroom. You'll recognize these. They're the shape blocks we have in the math center, right? These look pretty familiar. So we're going to go over the different shapes that we have, okay, that we use to make these puzzles. 
Now, I know you guys most likely do not have these shapes at home, but here's the thing. I'm going to send you tomorrow not only an attachment with these puzzles, but also shapes that you can cut out and make out of construction paper if you don't have the plastic ones, which I'm assuming you don't. But that's okay. These shapes are pretty easy to make, okay? Um, literally, you're just going to get um, a sheet that will have like these shapes on it. You just cut it out. You can use construction paper or you can just color them, whatever you want, and you'll be able to cut it out and easily do these puzzles on home. So what we're going to do first is we're going to look at the different shapes we have and then talk about which ones we need to use the puzzle. So friends, does anyone remember the name of this shape? Okay, this shape is a hexagon. Can we say hexagon? Ready? Hexagon. So how do we know it's a hexagon? Who can tell me? Well, a hexagon has six straight sides, right? Let's count them. One, two, three four, five, six. Okay, so we have our six-sided hexagon. It's one of the shapes we can use. Who could tell me what shape this is? Good, it's a square, right? How do we know something's a square? What's something you could tell me about squares? Do you know anything else? Okay, so we know squares have one, two, three, four straight sides, right? And all the sides are the same, right? So we have four straight sides and all the sides are the same. Now, we also have to have four what? Four right angles, right? We have one, two, three, four. So our square has four straight sides and four right angles. So that's another shape we can use. What shape is this one? Good, it's triangle. How do we know it's a triangle? What can you tell me about triangles? Good, it has one, two, three straight sides. So that's another shape we have. Here's another. What do we call this guy again? Good, this is trapezoid. Could we say trapezoid? Good. What do we know about trapezoids? Does anyone remember? Okay, our trapezoid has one, two, three, four straight sides, right? Now, are the sides all the same on a trapezoid? No, absolutely not, right? The, like we have a short side and a long side, so the sides do not have to be the same. What else does our trapezoid not have? Good, it doesn't have any right angles, right? Is this a right angle? No, right? Is this a right angle? Certainly not. Is this a right angle? No. And is this a right angle? No. So our trapezoids do not have any right angles. Okay, now our last one's a little confusing because it's actually this, the same shape but twice, but we'll see what's different. So who could tell me the knee? This shape has two names. What shape is this? They're both the same shape. Okay, what's the first name it has? And the second. Well, we know they're both rhombus, right, or diamonds. How do we know that? Right. They have to have four straight sides that are all the same. But they're different, they're different sizes. Does that matter, friends? No, right? We said a shape could be really big or really small um, as long as it has, in this case, four straight sides that are all the same, it is a rhombus, okay, or a, a diamond. Now, the only difference is this rhombus is wider and this rhombus is skinnier, okay? It's the same shape though, they're just different sizes. But we do need to have the two different sizes to make our puzzle. So, we're gonna make this puzzle first, it's a dog, okay? And again, I'm going to send these tomorrow in a printout, and I'll send the shape pieces as well. It might take a little bit of work to cut them out, but then once you have it done, you'll have it done. So, I'm going to work on this puzzle with you guys. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. So, the first thing we're going to do is look at what shapes we have. So, let's start off with the easy part. Let's start with the top. What shape are these two ears? And if we're not sure, we can count the sides. We have one, two, three. And even just looking at it, you might be able to tell me what shape it is without counting. But if you don't know, you can count the sides. So what shape has three sides? 
triangle, right? It's literally the only shape we have for three sides. So I'm going to take my triangle and I'm going to put it in here and see if it works. Now it does, right? We see it totally covers the shape, okay? It fills in the whole white spot. And also I want to put it right in the lines, okay? So we'll try a different shape just so I can show you what doesn't work, okay? Does that look like it fits at all? Does this? No, not even close, right? We still have all this white space here, okay? It should take up the whole space. I shouldn't have a big hole like that. We don't want that. You just take up the whole space. So like I said, even if I wasn't sure it was a triangle, I could just try out different shapes. But this one happens to work perfectly. And again, you, you might not necessarily have to count the sides, but if you need help, it's a good way to start. So I want to make sure it's perfectly in the lines and covering all the white space so we could fill up this puzzle. Okay, so now my dog has ears. Well, what about its head? What shape do we think this is? Does anyone know? And it's okay if you don't. Again, we can just count the sides or try different pieces till it works. Either way. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So friends, what shape do we know ha that has six sides? Good, our hexagon, right? So our hexagon fits perfectly. Now, here's the thing. We might have to turn the shape till it fits, okay? If I were to put the hexagon like this, okay? It doesn't exactly fit perfectly, right? We have a space right here, and we have a, some spaces on the bottom, okay? We don't want that. So you could see it doesn't fit exactly. So what you have to do is you have to turn it till it fits perfectly, and now we can see there's no more white spots. Okay, right, so that works. Now let's try another shape in there just to see something that won't work. Because like I said, again, if you're not sure, you could just try different shapes. So say I wanted to try my square. Does this work? Absolutely not, right? We have all this white space here and here and here and here, and it doesn't even come close to filling up the space. So this piece definitely does not work. So we know that my hexagon works. Now, I'm going to give you guys a little hint. There is another shape that can work here as well. Sometimes we can use other shapes combined together or put together to make another shape. If I were to take two of my trapezoids, you want to see something cool? If I put two of my trapezoids together, what shape does this make? Makes a hexagon, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So we can also use this shape. I'll show you. And combine it together. And look, it actually fills up the space perfectly. So there's a couple of different ways to fill this up because two trapezoids together happens to make our hexagon, which is pretty cool. So you can use either one. Now, again, now let's look at our next shape. We have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Well, we already talked about it. What shape has six sides? It's a hexagon, right? I can use my hexagon here, or as we already saw, I could use my two trapezoids. But again, just to show you, you can always try different things if you're not quite sure. Say I were to try my rhombus here. Does this look like it works? No, not at all, right? We could see I have some huge space down here, a huge space up here. It doesn't fit at all, okay? So, I also know that I might need to turn it, right? If I try it like this, it doesn't exactly work. We can see there's some white space here and here. So I'm just gonna have to turn it till it fits. There we go, perfect. So now let's look at the bottom here. Again, you might just look at it and already know what shape fits there, but that's okay. We're gonna try to figure it out by counting just in case you don't. So let's look at this middle piece here. It has one, two, three sides. So what shape do we know has three sides? Right, our triangle. Now here's one I was talking about. We might have to flip it. Let me just grab a triangle out of the bag. I have some more shapes on the floor down here. I just didn't want to clutter up the table. Okay, here's our three-sided shape. Now again, I said we might have to turn it. 
because I put my triangle like this. Does this look like it's filling up the whole space? It's not, right? There's a gap here and a gap here. So that doesn't work. So I'm going to have to turn my triangle until, ooh, look, it fits perfectly. Okay? Now I'm covering up that whole space. So now we only have two shapes left. So let's get a grab more out of the bag. Okay, let's look at our first shape. It has one, two, three, four straight sides. There's a couple shapes that we've talked about that is four straight sides. So we need to now look at the angles, right? We know four straight sides could be a square, it could be a rhombus, it could be a trapezoid. So if I'm not sure by looking at it, I can always check to see if it has any right angles. So let's look. Well, does it have a right angle? No, right? Look at this gap here. It doesn't have any right angles, so that already kind of gives me a guess. Also, are my sides all the same? No, right? I said in this side are not the same. So what shape do we know that has four straight sides and no right angles and the sides do not have to be the same? It's our trapezoid, right? So again, I'm going to try my trapezoid out and it fits perfectly. Now again, like everything else, you might have to turn it because say I try the trapezoid like this. Does this work? No, right? I have a white space here, white space here. I'm not filling in the whole space. So I might just have to turn it until it fits. Okay, it looks pretty good, right? I did my dog's feet. Now, again, you can try other shapes if you're not sure. Say I want to try my rhombus, because I saw it looks pointy here. Why not? Let's try rhombus. Does this work? No, right? We still have a gap here. So, I'm going to put my trapezoid, because I know it works. And there we go, my dog will be done. Now, here's something interesting, I don't know if you guys noticed. Remember I said we can also combine shapes or put them together to make new ones. Well, we know my, my trapezoid worked. But did you guys see something interesting? Because I was hoping you would. I did put my rhombus here, right? And I said it doesn't work because it leaves a hole. Does anyone notice anything interesting about the shape of the hole that I left here when I put my, my rhombus? What shape is it? Yeah, it's a triangle, right? We have one, two, three sides. So if I saw that there and I wanted to use my rhombus and I saw it left a hole that I could fill it with a triangle. So either one works. I could either use my trapezoid or I could try to combine shapes till I filled it, right? And it still makes the same shape. So you'll notice that sometimes when we combine shapes together, we can make new ones. Like I said, I put two trapezoids here to make my hexagon. Or in this case, I put a rhombus and a triangle and made a pretty nice ooh, trapezoid, okay? So sometimes you might notice when you're just filling in the spots that you can use different shapes. Like I said, it doesn't matter. Either one works. So again, I'm going to be attaching this, but if you guys go on our building blocks website you'll notice our newest computer game happens to be just this it's pattern block puzzles on your computer okay so you guys can start them today you'll be able to drag the shapes over and you'll be able to make our pictures okay you'll be able to fill up the spaces like i said it's actually mystery puzzles but just backwards okay instead of you taking the puzzles and seeing what shape it makes we're going to give you the shape and you use to figure i mean the picture and you're gonna have to figure out what shapes are needed to make the picture so that's it for today i will attach all that stuff and i hope you guys enjoy and also just a reminder on wednesday for those of you who can make it we're going to be having a zoom meeting at 10 30 although i understand a lot of people are busy so if you can't make our zoom meeting um i will be recording it and I will send you a copy of that. And also we will still have our circle time on Wednesday because our Zoom meeting can only be 40 minutes long because Zoom um, stops it at 40 minutes if unless you have the expanded version, which we do not. So I will still be making a circle time to go over everything we can't go over in our Zoom video. So please let me know if you have any questions and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.